First up, and Stompin' Tom Connors, the ultimate Canadian man of song. For decades, he's traveled the country singing and writing about the people and places of this land. Well into his 70s, he still heeds the call of the road. A feature chat with Stompin' Tom Connors coming up. That's right, playing the hockey song on Kazoo. This is Q. All right, here we go. A rare chat with Stomp and Tom Connors just in about 20 minutes from now. Now, I could list the awards and accolades and record sales Stomp and Tom has racked up in the near half century that's followed since that night in Timmins. The acclaim for his hundreds of original songs inspired by Canadian people and places and history. Or I could put it this way. Last year, Canada Post issued a Stomp and Tom postage stamp which seems to sum up how important he is to this country. Once again, at the age of 74 now, Stompin' Tom Connors is getting out the stomping board and setting out on the road for a summer tour of Canada, starting in Thunder Bay on July 31st, heading west all the way to B.C., where he'll play his first shows there in six years. And we've reached Stompin' Tom at his home in Wellington County, Ontario, this morning, before he hits the road. Hello, sir. Good morning, good morning, Jan. How are you today? I'm <laughs> Very well. It's very good to have you on the show. We've been looking forward to this. You ever get tired of, of telling that story about your big break at the Maple Leaf Hotel in Timmins, or, or do you get tired of hearing people tell it about you? Well, it's it's kind of like a broken record, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's nevertheless true, and uh, it's been a, a good many years, a lot of water under the bridge since then, but that's how it began, and that's where it all started. And is it true you kept in touch with that bartender through the years? Oh, yeah. Uh, he uh, also... Uh, learned to play the guitar after that, and uh, he came up with a few poems, and uh, we got together, and I uh, wrote a couple, two or three songs with him, and uh, and maybe more than that, and recorded some of them. So, uh, yeah, his name was Gate Lapine. Tom, you're about to start yet another tour at the end of this month. You start in Thunder Bay, you go all the way out to B.C. Uh, what's your relationship with touring at this point? Do you still get excited about getting out on the road? Oh, I always do. Uh, you know, I mean, the bones are uh, getting a little brittle, I suppose, after all these years. Uh, you know, I used to go out all year round in the beginning, and then it kind of got a little less and a little less. So now uh, uh, I usually only go out for a couple of months uh, a year, and the odd year I'll miss now and again. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I enjoy getting out there and singing to the folks, and of course, you know, I keep writing songs, and I like singing the new ones to the folks and uh, and like seeing everybody again. What do you like most about being on the road? Is it is it actually getting to, to meet the folks across the country? Yeah, it's actually, you know, doing the actual show and seeing the folks and talking to them and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, seeing their reaction to the new songs that I write from time to time. And, and of course, you know, they like the old ones. And um, it's it's the excitement of the of the and the camaraderie, you know, and the rapport with the audience and that kind of thing. And uh, I got a good bunch of guys in the band, and uh, Tim Huss uh, from the West, he'll be with me again this year. He was with me last year on the East Coast. And so he'll be joining me for the Western Tour this year, and he's a great talent, and uh, he sings a lot of Canadian songs. He writes Canadian, too, and this is one of the reasons why I'm really enthralled with the guy. He's a great talent. Hmm. What, what don't you like about touring? What don't you like about being out on the road? Well, I suppose it's the it's the drag uh, kind of uh, traveling. I, I drive everywhere I go, and it's the uh, you know kind of responsibility now that uh, uh, you know we we carry about uh, sixteen people on the road with us, and it's a big responsibility. So it's and then of course you know it's my smoking. I can't uh, can't go in restaurants anymore, so I got to eat in the van and. Uh, I can't, uh, it's hard to get motel rooms anymore, and, uh, you know, the smoking thing has become, uh, I've become a second-class citizen, really, in my own country. <laughs> well, it might be time to give up the smokes, Tom. Oh, I don't believe in that. Uh, I, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't bother me, and I feel good about it, and, uh, you know, you have to want to quit, and sure. I, I, you know, I really don't believe the, the stories. Listen, I will take me back for for a little bit, if you will. We were talking about your first real break as a musician in Timmins back in '64, but you'd already been traveling across the country, hitchhiking mostly, hopping trains since you were 15 years old. What did what did those very early years traveling around Canada do to help form the Stomp and Tom we know now? Well, I guess that is the the background of the whole thing because in traveling, I always traveled with a guitar over my shoulder and. Uh, uh, for years and years, it was uh, one stretch of 11 years uh, total winter and summer that I'd done nothing but uh, ride freights and, you know, hitchhike and all that stuff. And in the meantime, everywhere I went, I was, you know, writing songs, talking to people, getting their 
experiences as well as my own and putting them into song. And uh, now I have uh, 50 albums out altogether. And um, all, you know, everything I write about is pretty much about Canada, and the places I've been, the people I've met, and the jobs they do. And so that's that was the, the build-up, you might say, to the whole career, because when I came into the business, I wasn't like some who maybe only have enough songs for one album. You know, I had, uh, you know, several hundred songs already written before I ever got my first break. Did it always come naturally, like writing about things that you were seeing in this country, celebrating places within this country, or was it something that you actually thought about? Did you actually think, okay, I want to write about Canada? Uh, half and half, I suppose. Uh, I, you know, I didn't have much of an education. I went to grade nine. But I did have this ability to write uh, poems and uh, and put them to melodies and that kind of thing. And so it came natural, and, and the more I wrote, uh, the more people liked what I was doing. And uh, although uh, Timmins was the beginning of my career, my professional career, I had played, uh, you know, a night here and two nights there in hotels before that, from Montreal to Vancouver and down east, all over the place, uh, northern Quebec. and So I had uh, a good bit of experience in, in terms of uh, playing for audiences. And so I knew that, you know, they, they liked my songs, but I never had the opportunity to play for any length of time. Hmm. And that's where uh, Timmins came in. And, uh, you know, uh, that was the beginning of the, the career. I want to ask you about where you're going on this tour, because it's so funny. Uh, you, you must be uh, very aware of this. Various parts of the country claim you as theirs, right? You know, you're born in St. John, so New Brunswick thinks, you, thinks of you as a favorite son. PEI, of course, owns you. A lot of people in Ontario would like to think of you as, as Ontario Stomp and Tom for where you live now and, and the Timmins break. You're going out west now, and I mentioned you're about to play your first shows in B.C. for the first time in six years. What do you remember about the very first time you went as far as British Columbia? Well, that was with uh, just me and a, well, I hitchhiked all through there, of course, for years and back, and knew every blade of grass of the country before I became a professional entertainer. But then I started out with a, a, me and two guys, and uh, our first trip out uh, west and right out to the coast, I remember uh, our bottom line when we got back was 67 cents, <laughs> but it was the experience and playing for uh, the different places. We'd go into small towns, and there'd be some old theater that was torn down, uh, or not torn down, but abandoned, and we'd go in and dig the, the benches out and all this out of the cobwebs and set them all up, and <laughs> we'd be there a couple of days setting up the, the thing and tack posters on trees and telephone poles and everything, barn doors, and uh, we'd set up the show, and the curtains would fall down, and <laughs> it was, I don't know, it was quite a... You know, uh, quite an experience. And where was that? Are you thinking of somewhere in particular where the curtains fell down? Where the curtains fell down? Yeah, that was in. Um, uh, was, I think it was Glassland, uh, Saskatchewan. Hmm. Uh, maybe you never heard of the place, but uh, it's up north of uh, uh, the Battlefords and uh, oh, all the little wee towns all through the west. I, at that time, I wasn't uh, known enough to play any of the bigger venues. But we went to all the small towns, and whether they had entertainment in the town or not, we just set up wherever we could in some building or whatever and and uh, let the people know and, you know, charge them a buck ahead to come in. And uh, I remember one town, I think this was in Saskatchewan, too, where uh, they thought Stomp and Tom was a, was a wrestler. <laughs> and when they all come out, uh, a lot of guys come out and they're... <laughs> trunks and the whole thing never wanted to wrestle me. <laughs> so, 